Uh, in today's video, we are going to talk about life in the UK test number 10, uh, which is required for ILR and British citizenship applications. Um, thank you very much for liking my videos and uh, sharing with other people, your friends and colleagues. Um, so let us start and see what it involves in life in the UK test. Uh, so as usual, let us go through the most important things in the beginning uh, people who have just joined me um, so for them this is a computer-based test and there are 24 questions in the test out of those 24 questions you must um, do 18 of them correct to pass the test which is 75 percent of the test and the time for the test is 45 minutes which is more than enough I would say you can read every question twice or thrice um, yeah, it's up to you, but um, try to understand the question first and then answer it because sometimes when you read the question uh, first, you don't understand. So it needs sometimes um, two or three times to read the question to understand. So take your time because uh, 45 minutes is, is a very good time. Okay, so let us start um, the test and see what it is. Uh, what kind of questions today we have. So the first question is how old uh, do you need to be um, to be able to play the national lottery? Um, so 16 years, 18, 20 and 21. The correct answer is 16 years and you must remember that most of the things in the UK uh, for young people are start at the age of 16 except for a very few. Um, so second <clears throat> yeah so most of the things um, start at 16 um, but some things are 18 we will discuss that uh, later on um, in this test or probably in any other test next time okay so the next question is where is the five-day race meeting attended by members of the royal family and known as Royal Ascot celebrated. So, um, is it in Luton or Berkshire or Salisbury or Kent? And the correct answer is Berkshire. Now, Royal Ascot is a horse racing event five days long and it is in Ascot, which is obviously in Berkshire. So, the correct answer is the number second option. Question number three uh, Who was the first person to lead a Roman invasion in Britain in 55 BC? Um, so the first option is Emperor, Emperor Claudius and the second one is Julius Caesar, Napoleon and William Caxton. Uh, you could see that this is 55 BC and Napoleon and William Caxton are obviously, um, they are people who were born in recent times. I mean, Napoleon was obviously British, uh, sorry, French emperor in the 19th century and 20th century. Um, so we have two options, Emperor Claudius or Julius Caesar. The correct answer is Julius Caesar. Although he did not succeed in this attempt, but he um, did try to invade Britain 55 BC. The next question is, who wrote The Lord of the Rings? Now, Lord of the Rings is one of the most um, popular books in the UK. Uh, it's just like um, Harry Potter. Um, so two books, two works are extremely popular in the UK. I mean, number one is Harry Potter, obviously, and the second one is The Lord of the Rings, which is supposed to be UK's uh, or the nation's best loved novel. Um, so J.K. Rowling, J.R.R. R. Tolkien, and Sir William Golding and Jane Austen. So the correct answer is J.R.R. R. Tolkien. Um, Harry Potter is obviously written by J.K. Rowling. Most people know. The next question. Which court deals with minor criminal cases in England, Wales, and Northern Ireland? <clears throat> uh, minor criminal cases are dealt in um, the magistrates court in um, England, Wales, and Northern Ireland. But if it is uh, minor, means obviously small. So if it is a, a serious crime, then it goes to the Crown Court. 
The next question is, what name is given to the tombs where people buried their dead during Bronze Age? You remember Bronze Age in one of the previous questions or tests. Uh, we talked about Bronze Age, which started 4,000 years ago. So in those times, people used to bury their dead in where? Sakara Bray or Hill Forts or Round Barrows or Canyons. Um, so it was uh, Round Barrows. Okay. Um, the next question. The Northern Ireland Assembly cannot make decisions on education, defense, agriculture, and health. Now that is a very, very important question. And this does not apply to Northern Ireland Assembly. It applies to other devolved administrations as well. For example, Welsh Assembly and Scottish Assembly. Uh, because this is a uh, constitutional monarchy, uh, which means that the prime minister is the head of the government and which is um, in British Parliament. So the, so the central government in British Parliament controls the most important policies and they are not um, authorized to uh, devolve administrations to make any law about them. Uh, although they are given some um, rights to make laws, um, but uh, the correct answer for this is defense. Now defense is something which is only uh, discussed and treated in the British Parliament and none of the uh, devolved administrations um, is allowed to make any laws about the defense of the country. Um, so that's very important. So even if the question is the, the, the Northern Ireland is oh, sorry, the Welsh Assembly cannot make or the Scottish Assembly, the answer would be the same. Next question. According to the 2011 census, what percentage of the population identified themselves as Buddhists? Um, so mostly the question um, about the population, the question comes about Muslims or Sikhs or Hindu population, but sometimes it does come about Buddhists. So it is 0.5%, which is very, very low or the lowest population in this country. Next question, in which category did Jane Tovil and Christopher Dion win gold medals at the Olympic Games in 1984? Um, the first one is rowing, the second one is marathon, swimming and ice dancing. Well, let us make a connection here. Um, so as we can see that Jane Tovil and Christopher Dion, these are two people, okay? So the names of sports are uh, these in front of you. So three of them are just one word. There's only one which is ice dancing, which is two words. So two people, two words. That's how you make a link. Sometimes, sometimes you might find them silly links, but the mind remembers silly things more than the non-silly things, I would say. So ice dancing is the correct option. Next one is, what is the first verse of the national anthem of the UK, God Save the Queen? So this is the national anthem of the UK. And the question is asking about its first verse. Uh, so long to reign over us, God save the Queen, long live our noble Queen, and God save our gracious Queen. So this is the one which is the correct answer, God save our gracious Queen. Next question is, which of the following is not a British invention of the 20th century? The word not is highlighted, written in caps, so be careful about that. Um, so, so if there are four options, and if you have a question about um, something with a not like that, so that means that three of the options would be um, among the list, and one of them is not. Uh, among the list. So most people what they do is they tend to look at the first couple of options and they say oh yes that is the invention that is the discovery or anything else and they just click on that forgetting about the knots. So the radar yes that was invented in Britain, Turing machine, World Wide Web, all of them but radioactivity was not something that was invented by a British scientist. So the correct answer is radioactivity. The next question is, which, which British Prime Minister was famous for the speech, I have nothing to offer but blood, toil, tears and sweat? 
um, this is a famous line from the speech of one of those prime ministers which are listed here so the first one is Clement Edsley, Anthony Eden, Winston Churchill and Harold Wilson um, the correct answer is Winston Churchill his famous speeches um, most people know about them so if you haven't heard about that you read the life in the UK book and there are a couple of passages from his speeches not many I think two or three of um, yeah three or four of them so it's very easy to remember this thing not the whole speech but just one line the next question is which of the following countries did not belong to the Allies during World War One okay now try to understand that the World War One in uh, in World War One and two the world was divided into two groups not everybody participated but uh, there was a group of countries on one side um, which sided with uh, the UK and there were there was a group of countries on the other side uh, siding with Germany so the one the group uh, with UK in it was known as allies okay or allied forces okay so one of these countries was not the part of UK's group or allies which one is that France Bulgaria the UK and Australia so Bulgaria is the right option next question which two of the following charities work with homeless people uh, this is a very um, simple straightforward question and even if you haven't heard about this question and haven't read about this question you can still work it out because it is a common sense question now friends of the earth seem more like environmental thing shelter you know that shelter means a kind of place where you stay live um, okay hiding place so homeless people shelter okay very good crisis yeah they are in crisis homeless people are in crisis an ox uh, farm so we have these two as our choices so this is the correct answer shelter and crisis for homeless people next one is which flower is associated with Scotland this is a very very important question and I would um, also like to say that UK is made up of four countries and these four countries have their specific or national flowers they have their specific foods or national foods they have their national saints okay they have their national flags so you need to remember all of them so four flags four uh, foods four flowers and four saints okay so we might have talked about these things in other uh, videos but here I would just like to give you a, a brief uh, you could say detail about the flowers now here in one question you're going to understand and learn four questions basically um, so rose is England okay so national flower or associated with England thistle is Scotland daffodil is Wales and shamrock is Northern Ireland okay so see that the answer uh, for the question is obviously number second but we learn that other things are um, also um, I mean explain so you know that which flower belongs to which country next question is what is the money from TV license used for um, to pay actors and actresses no this is not the choice to pay for the British Broadcasting Corporation yes that's the correct answer to pay for publicity and to pay for private channels always read all the options before choosing the right answer so this one is number second next members of the Welsh government are elected every four years on the basis of uh, proportional representation or personal achievement instant runoff or first past the post system okay the correct answer is proportional representation but I would also like to talk about this bit okay so first past the post system is used for British Parliament elections where the Prime Minister is uh, chosen so that means so whosoever gets the most votes wins okay but here it is proportional representation slightly different from this next question 
what is the Commonwealth? So we have got four very long options. Um, so an association of countries that support each other and work together towards shared goals in democracy and development. So that is the correct answer. I mean, reading the whole thing is at the moment um, just waste of time. Uh, but obviously in the test, no, because we are just trying to see what is the correct answer. Um, so now you could see that this is democracy, this is development, and both of them start with D. Uh, so you remember that C and D, so, so they are next to each other. So C, D, D, you could say commonwealth and then democracy and development. So remember that uh, this is your answer. Um, okay, so commonwealth is a group of countries which was once um, ruled over by um, Britain known as the British Empire so they were later given independence but those countries still make a group um, called Commonwealth anyone can join that but most of the countries are the ones which were once ruled by uh, the British um, okay so the next question is which famous architect designed St. Paul's Cathedral after it was destroyed by a fire in 1666? Very, very, very important question. And uh, uh, it's a very easy one to remember. So the answer is Sir Christopher Wren. Um, look at that. St. Paul's Cathedral. Now, the name of the building is St. Paul Cathedral, but obviously it is a cathedral. Okay, It's a church. So cathedrals begin with C and the person who designed this building, uh, his name begins with a C as well. So Sir is obviously the title, so not the part of the name. So you must uh, remember that Cathedral Christopher and that's how you remember this important questions. Uh, question. Next, which of the following is a fundamental principle of life in the UK? It's a, I would say, terribly important question. Okay, it's a must question. Rule of men, obviously very negative thing. Individual liberty seems very good. Intolerance of those with different beliefs. I don't think this could be the fundamental principle of any country in the world. Um, I mean, intolerance of other people. No, this is not true. Lack of social cohesion. So the correct answer, which is obviously the most positive thing, is individual liberty. Now, I would also like to say um, a couple of things here. In the first chapter <clears throat> of the book, obviously these questions are from the book and the whole test is based on the book Life in the UK book. If you haven't watched my previous videos, you can go back and see. I have mentioned the book as well. There's a picture of the book as well. So you can get it from your library, local library, or you can get it from W.S. Smith. The book is the thing. OK, now in the first chapter, you will have five basic principles which are five fundamental principles of the life in the UK. You have then five freedoms that you have been given and then you have five rights, uh, basic rights uh, that you get when you become settled or British citizen of this country. So these are 15 things. Okay. These are so very important that sometimes you have three questions from these 15 things. Sometimes you have two questions. So most of the time you will have definitely two questions. Now, if you remember these 15 things, your two questions are sorted out very nicely and cleanly. OK, so I would suggest you to remember, memorize them, paste them on your fridges, in your kitchens, in your toilets, wherever you go uh, until you pass the test. OK, so so I mean, I would I would ask you to go back and see um, those 15 things, make a list of those things and uh, and try to remember them. I wouldn't do it. This is your homework for today. Next one. Which of the following countries belongs to the Commonwealth? OK, as I mentioned that Commonwealth is a country is a group of 52 people. I didn't mention 52, but I mentioned that it is a group of people that was um, once ruled by the British Empire. So Morocco, Algeria, Mozambique and Mali. Now the country Mozambique is 
in Commonwealth. The rest of the countries are not. Next question is who has to pay national insurance contributions in the UK? Everybody under the age of 65, almost everybody who is in paid work, everybody under the age of 70 and people with earnings over £18,000 a year. Uh, the correct answer is everybody who is in paid work, almost everybody obviously. Um, so remember one thing that you might be exempted from tax but if you are in a paid work you have to pay your national insurance okay in most cases so that is the correct answer next question is a good way to support your local community is to shop for uh, products locally is that true or false um, it is true okay um, so that's the correct answer the last one where is the centerpiece of the Remembrance Day service known as Cenotaph located. You know this is the place where Queen or someone from the royal family and people from around the world, not people actually, world leaders come and um, remember those who laid down their lives in World War One or Two uh, to pay tribute and people obviously lay some flowers on that um, so this is in central London, which is Whitehall, central London. That is the correct option. Okay, so that is the end of the test. Um, I wish you all the best. I hope you understand what I teach you and sometimes the connections that I try to make uh, between the question and the options. Uh, this is how you remember things easily. Okay, you can do it yourself. This is just a guideline. I mean, there are no fixed rules to do that, but you can make connections like that because that is how the mind remembers things. Um, if you still have any question, just leave a, a message in the comments and I will definitely get back to you. I try to respond to every single message and I, I think I have done um, this so far. I have responded to every message on my channel. So I wish you all the best and see you next time. Bye.